Hey guys, welcome to episode seven of Playthrough with the Designer. Uh, this week we have got one of the original legends of course design in this community. Mayday91283, we're at Safe Haven. How's it going, Mayday? It's going well. I, I wouldn't quite say I was an OG, but uh, uh, maybe uh, a, a Gen Xer, uh, perhaps second generation, something like that. Oh. Yeah. So, because you, you've won the rookie contest, haven't you? Like three or four years ago? Way back in the day. So long ago that HB actually ran it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then did you win a World Cup too? Am I remembering I that? I did. Yes. Nice. So, you have a couple of accomplishments to your design portfolio. Yeah, it's 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 been a fun little hobby for sure. Yeah. So, um, we're here at Save Haven. Um, there have been some comments about this being Whistling Straits. Why don't you take a swat at your pill on the tee there and uh, maybe address some of that? Well, it's uh, I mean that's certainly where the inspiration is based, without a doubt, and. Uh, yeah, I, that, that's kind of how I roll a lot of the times. You know, I, I you know, we all kind of scour the web for ideas, and actually we broke ground on this course right about the time of the Ryder Cup. So it was easy to kind of draw the inspiration and, you know, just try to mimic that feel and that vibe. Mm -hmm. And just kind of from there, kind of go where the plot took me. So is it kind of the thought, like, okay, well, Whistling Straits is on the lake, and it's kind of got this kind of style, but then from there, we'll, we'll yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, in the style of, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think there was one or two kind of sarcastic comments out there, but mm. that's fine. And so the plot came first, I'm guessing? Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Plot pretty much came first. A kind of, kind of a general idea. Cause like said, I, okay. I know I wanted along the lake kind of mm -hmm. running down toward the, toward the shore and back up. And then from there, it was just kind of, as, as I remembered, I wanted to make sure when we get to the, the shoreside holes there, you know, four or five, 14, 15, those were kind of the first ones in because I, I, I kind of wanted to set that foundation and the rest of it kind of kind of built off that routing. All right. Oh, I forgot you have a seizure every time you hit a shot. That's the only way I can get close to actually hitting a decent <laughs> tempo. Even that doesn't work half the time. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So, yeah, I've, I've only ever, have I only ever played this pin two? I'm trying to remember. Um, cause pin two is over to the right, I think. So I remember the, um, slope over there being kind of mean. Very possibly. There's three different versions of this course, and I think they all have, uh, different pin locations. So. Oh, really? Oh, uh, and I forget which is which. And I've just followed you right over here. That's, that's smart. Yeah. Short sighting ourselves here was not the, uh, not the optimal play. No. And so we got the winds are at medium, are they? As you, uh, they are at high. They're high. Oh, okay. Which I'm guessing is what you would kind of prefer people play this course. Well, what the course is designed to be played at. Yeah, medium to high winds for the most part would be the best way to play it. Just because I, I mean, mean, this course will absolutely get eaten alive in low winds. Yeah, I, I may have given it a beating the time I played it. <laughs> I, I do seem to remember that, but it was low winds and it wasn't the tournament version either, which is obviously the harder one. So you start. You said you started this rider. Right? Was Ryder Cup in like November last year? I don't remember. remember. Oh what? God, <laughs> Wisconsin golf in November. That's a stretch. Oh, that's right. I was just thinking because <laughs> COVID screwed everything up, right? So I know oh, it's normally was, uh, in September. That was uh, late September, yeah. And then was it just right after that that you started with this, or? 
Uh, it was, I think, Ryder, I might have actually even been fiddling with the plot while the Ryder Cup was going on, as I recall, but mm. and got most of the routing in, but then there was a period of, I can't even remember, maybe five, six weeks where I really did nothing on it, because as you can see looking around, there's a, there's quite a bit of detail work that needed to happen. Yeah. <laughs> tons of planting and tons of bunkers. And that the bunkering was pretty tedious. It wasn't overly hard. It was just putsy. Mm -hmm. But it, it was the planting that really stumped me for a while, trying to get that deep fescue sort of look in this game, and you know, trying to make sure the draw distances worked out so most people could get that effect and whatnot. But oh, like the render in that, yeah. Has there been comments like as I haven't played it on console? Like this wouldn't this there's no lag or anything on this, is there? Um, uh, not that I'm aware of. I but, haven't seen anything. Yeah, it's it, it, there's a lot going on here, but it's not the type of stuff I don't think that causes lag. And, and the other thing I found out when you plant this much grass, it really it really taxes the the memory meter mm, yeah. in the designer. So I was not only dealing with trying to manage the object meter at the end, as that was near 100%, but the memory was starting near 100% as well. So Jeez. It was, uh... Or actually, no, I take that back. It wasn't memory. It was the file size. File size, yeah. But, uh... Well, we, we were able to see a way to the end. Yeah, I think that's enough, Club. Was there a point where you, you know, kind of had that, geez, I don't know if I'm going to get there? Or was it just kind of like, ah, oh, this is going to be a pain in the ass? Uh, I, I wouldn't know if it was not going to get there. It was just I, I needed kind of a, a mental break from that. It was about the time that Par 3 Perfection had, had come about, too. So Right. So I kind of took a little mental break, worked on Aspen Villa. and. Mm -hmm. And that kind of refreshed my mind because I was able to get back and then I kind of was able to find my groove of planning and was able to see it to, see it to the finish. Yeah. Um, so you said you almost blew out the object meter. What what killed it? Uh, a lot of the grasses. Yeah. That, okay. that definitely hurt. Um, just because there's so much of them. But between that and then pretty much because we're in Highlands here, Mm -hmm. So all the trees you see are manually planted. There, there's nothing that's autogen there. Okay. And then along the shore there, the rocks really took up a ton of ton of meter too. Yeah. We're kind of getting into a run here where I start to to give my obligatory nod to the template holes. <laughs> You know I love a good template. Yeah, well, we're right in the thumbprints here on this short hole, so. So this marshy, like, watery area be between uh, me and the, um, between us and the green, is that lay the water plane and then put lawn up water, bleh, put land on top of it? Uh, let's like this, see, that was, uh, this that year. was the double water plane. Oh, okay. Just so people who design can get some um, tips yeah. on how to do something like this, because this just looks wild. Actually, that that might... Actually, look at how that ground was burnt out. I think that was single plane. Okay. But uh, that, that was... Um... That was Doubtful Oblisk who had that technique where if you're making a river... You stair cut case the water planes down gradually, gradually, gradually. So you actually get the effect of a, a running river. Oh, okay. I mean, because otherwise it'd be one single water plane and you have to make everything perfectly flat. And... I seem to remember another YouTuber um, having fun creating a stream. <laughs> <laughs> They can be tedious, for sure. 
I, I recall his being somewhat tedious for a certain Dream Team course. Uh, I missed the thumbprint. Yes, you did. And then I just hammered this putt. Did you, though? Oh, yeah, that is a little spicy. Not bad from back there, though. Could be. I just didn't have it aimed in right enough in the first place. Oh, money. I thought you couldn't putt. <laughs> it's not Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing I find amusing is you and Victor are probably the two best mini golf players in the game, and you both can't putt. Apparently. Well, the thing with mini golf, though, is it's that's more of just about angles and whatnot. I mean, and a lot of the times you can just smack the crap out of it, but as long as you got the angle right, it's fine. I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt that half the courses you guys are the ones that created them. Yeah, yeah, we we, we may know a thing or two about putt, but <laughs> <laughs> are we ever going to be not into the wind here? It, it turns around. So, like the first, well, three and. Now three we've turned, and now four and five we're going to be running against the shoreline, and then six we we turn back and head back toward the clubhouse. So it's kind of out back, out back, the routing. Actually, this wind coming off the lake is almost a bit of a safety bumper on this hole. Yeah, I think I've been in this left bunker every time I've played this course. And this is the one time where a waterfall is acceptable. <laughs> it's actually going into, you know, an ocean. Or a lake, sorry. Yeah. It was kind of a stopgap fix in a perfect world. I might have been able to to lower that land just a little better to get it to flow gradually in. But uh, I wanted to create that marsh look on three. So without doing massive <laughs> elevation tweaks elsewhere, that was kind of the the patchwork solution. Okay. Oh, what a doubt, at, damn it. Oh, this is a shot. Look at this. Stay up there. Oh. No. No. That is so hard to get on that team. You almost, you almost have to hit a cut in there. I mean, I was only hitting driver, so I should have been able to stick it. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you to hit a cut off a hook lie here. So With a driver. Yeah. With water all the way down the left. So basically, it's easy. Yeah, kind of like that. Oh. Yeah, you just missed it too, I think. Yeah, I yeah. started it too far out. That's okay. I wanted to be off the green anyway. <laughs> As we record this, I just finished my Jimmy Boredom match play match against Seamount, and uh, I think it was the second hole. The ball just rolled off the green, and I just was like, I'm better chipping than putting, and damn if I didn't just chip the thing in. <laughs> Made it, I think, is of the similar um, vein. He'd rather chip than putt half the time. Yeah, Splash might have been the better play for that one, but... I'm trying to get away from Splashes. I'm not succeeding, but... Because... Oh. Look at this putt. Ah! It should be a um, partial pitch from there, but maybe next game. I only just noticed the greens are 155. I forgot that. Yeah, I think the tournament version was 171, something in that range, I want to say. So this one's kind of meant, I mean, it's not an easy course, but it's kind of the more comfortable of the two, I'm guessing. It is. Yeah, it's a little bit softer conditions. We don't have as many shaved runoffs around the greens. You know, a few more bumpers for you. Oh, so you did that much more with the tournament. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Huh. 
Yeah, no, that was kind of kind of the idea. Just uh, set this up as if it were for for resort play, mm -hmm. as opposed to tournament play, which we'll see on eighteen. Yeah, that's how that was set up. This might be my favorite Redan of the ones I have made. And it is a crutch of mine having a Redan on a on a course. <laughs> but uh Wind isn't the greatest for this hole, but I really do like how the ball reacts on this fairway in this green. And then I go hit a fast. The wind's gonna have to do a lot of work. Hmm. I mean, that could have been a lot worse. Your your, your guy doesn't seem very happy, but he'll get over it. <laughs> Jeez, I'm only t I I did I'm only within twenty feet. What's wrong with me? I this doesn't get there, but I have three. Well, watching you and Simo play previously. <laughs> If this is enough, but I can't imagine it is. Yeah. Oh, maybe. Well, remember, it's a redan, so you, ideally you want to be offset of the target line at about 10 yards short, and it should kick and roll forward for you. Yeah. Did we get it high enough? Nope. Nope. So you said this is the favorite Redan you've ever done? Uh, of the ones I've built, yeah, I'd say this is... I I enjoy how the ground game works on this one the most. Okay. That That's the thing. Okay. Aye! Yeah, it's a strong par three. Um, I'm just curious what this course is like when the wind isn't hurting. Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> oh, yeah, downwind. Look at this. I would also, speaking of crutching on certain philosophies, I would say if there's a quote-unquote Mayday template, this hole is kind of it. Because we've seen it elsewhere. We've seen it the 8th at Nasita, 13th at Fisheye. For, for a shorter par 4, I'll give you driver all day. You can blast a driver out there as far mm -hmm. as you wish. But... It's going to leave you with an awkward angle to a narrow green that's running away from you. Whereas if you, you bunt the three wood up the right side, you've got probably a full wedge in at a much better angle. And that's... And it's, for a shorter par four, I, I really do enjoy that uh, that little conundrum. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that the, that shorter par four that's not drivable is kind of one of the more difficult designs, isn't it? It, it is, because, I mean, you've got... I mean, you, you know the player is going to have a short club in their hand for the second shot, regardless of what they pull off the tee. So the challenge is to try to make that second shot interesting. Mm -hmm. Even here, I'm a little too far left, so... And especially with the wind at her back, I do not have a a lot of room to land this shot. I'm kind of wishing the wind was into us. <laughs> yeah, you just see a lot of like newer, kind of less accomplished designers. Their 400 yard par fours smash driver as far as you want, and then toss a little pitch on it. And that shot was literally one foot from being perfect. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, I, I mean, I've got lob wedge here, but it's the wind. If it wasn't for the wind, it'd be easy, but... Yeah. I mean, you've still left yourself a full swing, which is nice, but you're still downhill with a ball that's running away from you. Yeah, and the wind pushing it the whole way. So, not bad. It's always going to take that first big bounce, and then it's not coming back. That's a cute little bunker. Yeah, I've found myself situated right at the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know how many bunkers are on this course? Good God. <laughs> I lost count somewhere in the 500s. <laughs> <laughs> and has um, Dustin Johnson been in any of them? Uh, no. Okay. But I've made sure there are no rakes and that they're all clearly defined as uh, pedal areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we don't want any um, grounding of the club controversies. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, how they were considering those things bunkers, though, is beyond me, because, I mean, there was fans standing in the damn things. Right. Like, not a bunker. Yeah, well, because they were sand-based, I reckon. Yeah, but I thought when they played... Well, they, when, when they played at Kiowa, they just called everything a waste bunker, right? They just said none yeah. of this is a hazard. A, a sandy area is what they called it. Yeah, that yeah. was that was the nomenclature. Yeah, waste bunker. Yeah. So then we get ourselves a beefy par 5 here with some interest in the second shot we'll see in a minute. This wind, it's, it's borderline reachable, though. Mm -hmm. Even at 660 yards. That's the game now, isn't it? You want to make sure a par 5 is not reachable, make it 700. Yeah. Whereas in real life, a 700-yard par 5, I wouldn't be able to reach in 4. No, I know. <laughs> so then, yeah, this this area here is kind of where you got to make your decision, right? Is where you're gonna hit your second shot to if you're not getting there. Yep. Um, because and again, another mistake a lot of people make on par fives is they the second shot is just boring. Yeah. Yeah, I'm always uh, on these par fives, e even reachable par fives, because sometimes if you miss the fairway, you got to bail out somewhere too. Yeah. You always got to consider. Well, where would I want to leave myself if I can't get there? Well, I'm probably going to want to leave myself about 110 to 95, something where I've got lob wedge, sand wedge, something like that, full swing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, pinch it off, make the landing area interesting, blind in this case. And... A lot of it, too. I mean, I would say I almost fall into more of the Pete Dye camp, where it's, I mean, especially like Sawgrass and whatnot, he's almost trying to goad you into hitting the aggressive shot. Yeah. And will reward, reward you. You can bunt it along all day. You're not going to make a lot of birdies, but you can bunt it along and play safe. Mm-hmm. And kind of defer your challenge. But I mean, if if you play aggressive, yeah, there could be big trouble looming. Yeah, he's got a lot but of blow-ups. But it's also the path to, the, to, to make birdies. Mm -hmm. Case in point, I decided to go for that and be aggressive. And now I find myself in a very much a jail situation. That's an easy pitch. I mean, it isn't, but... Well, for me, easy pitch is an oxymoron. <laughs> oh, yeah, look well, at... that one will work. And look at you in jail here. <laughs> You're so screwed. Oh, the, uh, I, would, I almost would rather have your shot than what I have. Because I, I tried to draw it in, and I, it didn't draw, so then I didn't get the ridge. I think you got handled that just fine. Uh, there was a guess there because it was in the rough. And you've got the uphill birdie putt. Mm.
Oh. That had a little bit of movement to it. Yeah. Who designed these greens? Yeah, some... Some sadistic uh, evil man. Well, wait till they get to 170-ish or whatever they are. All right. So then... Is this kind of the... I mean, I know there's... It, okay. If there was the ability to have a prevailing wind, what would it be here? I'm trying to remember what I had it set at. For, for uh, tournament conditions. I would... If I, if I recall, though, we're playing opposite of the prevailing wind. Because okay. the prevailing wind... I'd want at your back on 13, which is truly drivable. And 13 runs the opposite direction. So this is the opposite of the prevailing wind. Okay. So that's something worth talking about, too, with wind. Um, you'll often see people post a course and they'll say, um, you know, play this direction, wind, this strength etc etc um what's your feeling on prevailing winds and and you know course's ability to deal with different winds well i i i think you kind of answered it there in your question i mean i, I think you can tailor a course for, toward a super a certain wind mm -hmm. where it plays the best but it darn sure better play well in the opposite direction because i mean how many people are actually going to look at that forum post Especially if it yeah. ends up on a society or something. I mean, yeah. they're just going to load it up and play. And if you get a default win that's blowing out of the opposite direction, I mean, you shouldn't have a fairway that's a 270 carry that all of a sudden is playing into a, into a headwind that's supposed to play into a tailwind. Yeah. Yeah, I get so, that. yeah, I get that one all the time where I'll play a hole and I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know about this. Oh, well, you got this wind. Okay, yeah, I did, but it still has to be playable. Yeah, so I mean, you know, when I set up prevailing wind, oh, <laughs> again, where is this on Wednesday night? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm thinking specifically of certain holes I want to play a certain way in a certain wind, but I mean, at the end of the day, the course should be playable no matter what the wind's set at. Mm -hmm. Well, it's my understanding that in real life you don't control the winds, so... No. I mean, but that being said, though, I mean, in, in real life, there are prevailing winds. I mean, Yeah, like, yeah. You know, if we're, we're at Whistling Straits, I mean, you'd be playing for you know, something that's you know, in the summer, you're going to see a westerly or a southwesterly wind most yep. of the time. But, you know, every so often, you'll get that, you know, cold front come through. And the next thing you know, you're playing a brisk wind smacking you in the face out of the northeast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't live that far from Whistling Straits. And, yeah, it's west, southwest wind is uh, typical yeah. in the summer. That's something I wouldn't mind seeing in the designer in, in the new game is the ability to, to choose kind of a prevailing wind that... Yeah. I don't know if you'd have that just, okay, that's the default wind or just something where, you know, the majority of the time... I, I think that would be a good idea to, for, for the default. I mean, because we can set firmness and green speed. So why not have default be what the designer sets it? I mean, if you want to change the wind... You certainly have those controls, mm -hmm. but I, I, I could certainly see that. The only thing I'm thinking is that then it might make designers a touch lazy because then they wouldn't feel like they have to worry about other wins because everybody's going to play it on default. That's fair. But then too, I mean, if you're looking to, you know, have it on a tour or whatnot, mm -hmm. it goes back to the whole conversation. You darn well better make sure it's playable more in one direction. Yeah. Because they're not going to set the wind the same direction all four rounds, that's for certain. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, there's pros and cons of that one. So I'm, I'm thinking of the guy who, I mean, the vast majority of people designing are not designing to have their courses be on tour or are good enough for it to be able to anyways. So I don't know. Well, I, I'm thinking in that instance, there's probably, there will probably be other pitfalls that'll hold them back as well. It mm -hmm. won't just be a win thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And all that, as you know, it comes with rep and times and designer. Get in. Yeah. I mean, again, I think one of the things people are often surprised by how many hours these courses take to create. I, I couldn't even begin to tell you how many hours I sunk into this. Yeah. I mean, you, you spent as much time planting and bunkering as I would suggest most designers that aren't TGC tours, tour worthy designers spend on their entire course. You probably spend more time doing that than they do on their entire course. Yeah. And that's not to say that a course that's, you know, done in, 48 50 hours whatever can't be good it certainly can mm -hmm. but i think a lot I, of people think it's like 10 hours though maybe and they think that's a long time no uh, yeah i I've, I've barely got all the holes down in 10 hours you know a lot of that time is just fiddly with a routing get seen what what works what doesn't maybe decide to blow it up and start over Mm -hmm. I'd say that's the hardest part getting started and the second hardest part is finishing well, once, you, once you're hooked and on the idea and you're sold and you know it in your mind it can work and then then the ball rolls pretty easily and it really doesn't take 95% of the time to get 95% of the course completed right but a lot of that time comes in the final. Well, there's a red fast. Not like this was a reachable par five or anything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, then a lot, of, a lot of that time comes in the putting in the final details. Yeah, which I think is a lot where a lot of newer, lesser designers just they don't do that, right? Yeah, or really deciding to to go crazy and build a football course somewhere where people <laughs> can't see it. <laughs> Who would do that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so here's a question for you. Yeah. Would you ever have been able to make something like this for a contest? Or was the fact that it wasn't a contest the thing that gave you the ability to be like, okay, I, you know. Um, I, I think if if I if I got in a groove and ground really hard, I probably could. But the fact that this wasn't in the contest or any sort of contest gave me the freedom of not worrying about a deadline. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you, you look. I mean, there was there was a six week follow period on this course because, like I said, I just. I was struggling to get the look I wanted with the planting. It just was not coming together. So I just, I just walked away from it for, for a good month, month and a half. And in a contest, and, you wouldn't have been able to do that. Yeah, certainly wouldn't have had that luxury. What was the last TGC uh, tours contest you were in? I can't remember. Uh, Dream Team with uh, Merced. So, like a year ago, Dream Team. Yeah. Are you planning on doing more, or are you kind of like, I'm just gonna... I I think I'm to the point where... I'll go in. I've kind of gotten what I need to get out of those contests. Oh. 
I mean, I've done them. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's been a challenge, but do I really want to to grind and push like that anymore? Right. I don't. I, I, I'm having more fun right now, kind of doing my own little thing. And I say that, and obviously, I've been in you know several of uh, Victor side contests and mm -hmm. VLS series, but I, uh, the difference there is not so much about the result at least to me mm -hmm. um it's more about just doing goofy stuff and trying things see if they work i mean i built a freaking top golf facility for crying out loud for a mini golf course. <laughs> i yes you did you know aspen villa i built a freaking factory with smoke coming out the chimney stacks i that, that's that's kind of where I'm at now, and and I, I think it's just oh, Jeremy. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's like a point in the evolution of the design software where I I think we've pretty much juiced about as much out of this uh, orange as we can. Mm -hmm. So now it's just okay, trying different stuff. Do you think the new game will have a bigger orange to take juice out of? I hope so. I, I certainly do. Um, I, I know I've heard grumbles that it, it's still in Unity. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not that I don't know if I've if I've seen that officially or not, but from, from the grumblings I've heard, if that's the case, um, I I don't know how much more they can tap out of it. Yeah, I mean it, it's kind of a double edged sword because I, I I think to really break through the new ground, it almost need a new engine, like an Unreal or something like that. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, do they perhaps risk making a designer that's less user friendly? I mean, this this designer isn't easy, but I mean, I mean, I remember the old Tiger Woods PGA designer, you know, Arnold Palmer, Link stuff like that. Yeah, this is that. infinitely easy, easier to build, build a creation at least for me than it was in those, those older generation designers. Yeah, I I totally fell for you. You suckered me into that one big time. <laughs> yeah, I was but this to... is one where I almost you can almost blast it up the left and have a decent angle in. That's what I was trying to do. But yeah, it's also more than fine just to be able to hit a three wood here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, when it comes to graphic engines, it's not a trivial thing to change either. No. And I mean, I know we've got 2K now, but still, HB is a small company. No. They still do the majority of the programming, I think, don't they? I believe so, yes. Well, the other end of that coin, too, is. I mean, as soon as you flip game engines, I I doubt any of the legacy courses come over. Yeah, true. And, you know, courses like this become a relic of the past. Now, yeah. eventually, they'll be replaced by better and better courses, because that's just the evolution of things. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, at least at the start of that game cycle, it, it would take a while for for some quality courses to be populated. And if you think about 2K, where they've got the, the point of differentiation and the selling point over the game the EA's working on, yeah, I mean, it's just the absolute amount of user-created content that yeah. you're able to enjoy in this game. And giving that up right now wouldn't be a good wouldn't be a good plan. 
Although you're, you'll have to port courses over, won't you? The new game. Yeah, but but, but that is usually relatively simple. Okay. I mean, as long as there aren't any major evolutions in the designer that would redo things differently, I'm thinking like between TGC two and 2019, where the way, way sp lines were were completely overhauled. And anything that was done in TGC2 almost had to be resurfaced. Great, bud. Thanks. But yeah, as long as there isn't any major overhaul like that, the porting process is relatively simple. Because, I mean, we we know now that EA is out in spring of 23, right? That's yeah. what they announced? Yep, just uh, this past week, yeah. Is it, has H been kind of been every other August for their course for their games? That that has been the pattern. Um, twenty nineteen came out of August eighteen. Two K twenty one came out in August twenty twenty. I'm trying to remember when TGC two came out, and I'm drawing a blank. It's been mm -hmm. that long ago, but, mm -hmm. but at, at least when two K has been involved, the cycle has been every two years in August. Whether that remains the same, who knows? There's yeah. nothing official out there, to my knowledge, but... But if we were to assume that they keep that um, yeah. cycle, then that's given them, what, six, eight, nine months head start on EA? Yeah. That's uh, not insignificant. Yeah, sir. And they'd be able to take uh, advantage of this year's FedEx Cup, too. Which would certainly... Help them in momentum, assuming it's an August 22 release date. Yeah. I mean, e I... I have a feeling. I mean, EA's kind of, you know, given it itself a general window with spring of 23. You got to think the Masters, though. Absolutely. You, you got to think Masters week is when that puppy's coming out. I, I'd be shocked. I mean, maybe earlier, maybe the players at earliest, but. I mean, with as much as they've touted Augusta and the majors, it's it's got to be Masters Week. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd be shocked if it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the one thing they have that Two K doesn't. So why wouldn't you lean on it? Yep. And that'll, I mean, for career mode, that's the one thing they're gonna have that Two uh, K won't. So I expect their career mode to be better, but. I don't care either. <laughs> Just, yeah. I can't imagine they'll have a designer or a good designer. No. Well, I I would be flabbergasted if they have a designer. If they yeah. did, it'd be something I would be, I would sniff around on. Yeah. But I, like I've said previously, I mean, maybe it's a first, you know, first time release buy for me. And without a designer, uh, it really doesn't have any stay in power for me personally. Oh, if there's no designer, there's I don't even, I don't bother because the yeah. career mode will be will be old in about five minutes. Yep. Yeah. yeah well, let's put it this way: it's not something I would. I'm gonna pay sixty nine ninety nine on a triple A title for. No. I'd probably wait for a few months. Go go on sale. You know, pick it up for thirty nine or twenty nine ninety nine. I'd check it out at that price point, but not not at seventy bucks without a designer. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. You would think EA wouldn't bother getting involved unless you know they were planning on winning, but <laughs> EA has also destroyed a bunch of franchises. So, R.I.P. Madden. Yeah. And I just don't think, like, online matchmaking with DLC is going to work too well in golf. No. All right, so this is an instance. This hole is built for a prevailing wind at your back, so you can go for it and take on, take on this shot where you can go for it and skirt it on. You can make a two here easily, especially that front pin. Mm -hmm. But those deep bunkers bring four and five into play pretty easily. 
But now in this headwind, I'm thinking, where the hell do I lay up? Because left's a tight window. Right, I'm trying to skirt around that pop bunker and have a bad angle. So so that kind of goes back to that that conversation. Yeah, this this hole's built for the wind at your back. But I mean you should try to make it play interesting too when, when the wind's blowing the opposite direction. Oh yeah. There's bunkers everywhere out here. Yeah. Which if you're playing it not into the wind, you're probably wondering why they're even there, right? Because you're sitting driver at the green. Yeah, more more than likely you're you're going for it if this is anything but a headwind. But then again, you're trying to make the golfer think off the tee. Well, if I go for it, what do I got? If I yeah. if I can't or I don't want to, now what do I got to do? Mm-hmm. And as we saw here, the layup was far from automatic. Although I think I've left myself in a pretty suitable spot. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm too close. Okay, this shot never works, so I'll try it again. Kitchen ain't easy, but it sure is fun. Oh, see, yep. Hey. Whoa! Oh, that actually worked. I I'm impressed you spun that ball uphill. Oh, that's why it worked. I did the, I did the max, um, loft max spin yeah because that's falling off to the left and to the front there so well you, uh, you know, got that suck back right was rather impressive we saw what happened to mark today when he ripped it off the front of that green it was probably the same thing those um fully de fully lofted fully um full spin lob yep. wedge pitches will spin like crazy Yeah, so I mean that's that's a whole if if I was playing it and it was in the wind I'd be like ah oh, crap I want to be able to go for it but it's still a good test um, into the wind and then this hole I think I'd rather be into the wind. Oh no doubt. And this was the proof of concept. This was the first hole built, and yeah, there there's definitely some resemblance to the twelfth at Whistling Straits. Mm -hmm. Certainly not gonna lie there, but. It's certainly not the same hole, but I, I, I think this this kind of drives home the point of what we're going for around here. Yeah. Yeah, this has got some similarities for sure, but that's okay. And yeah, downwind, this is not ideal. The one thing is it does give you a wedge in hand, which is nice, but... Uh... Back pin wouldn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I, I I wouldn't want to hit to that little tongue on the right with a tail windy. No, no. This is pin three, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I think pin four is the one that's on that right tongue. If I remember right. So, the, I mean, this is one of the easier pins on the green, I would imagine. As far as approach shots, I haven't seen the putt yet, but... Yep, for the most part, because one would be right in the front, two's all the way in back, three's here, and four's on the right. Um, get in. Overread it. 
I already spent all my birdies today. And now do we turn from here no, home? We're, we're, still heading up, we're still heading out because 15 oh, okay. runs along the shoreline. Okay. Oh, six bells, but downwind. And this might just be about the perfect wind for this hole, too. It's a nice little draw tailwind. A shot you want to hit a draw because the camera's running your ball the other way. Oh, yeah. Is gonna kick right, but yeah, that oh. is that's perfect, isn't it? That is absolutely the best win you could possibly have for this hole, and, and that's kind of the balance. I mean, third, I mean, that's probably the worst win you could have on 13, yeah. But, but then... it turns around and gives you a gift on 15, and it made seven drivable or ah. reachable, rather. I... Eh, decent lie, you still might be able to get her home. Oh, we're going to try. House rules, right? Yeah, exactly. There's no smart golf played here. Oh, yeah, and you've got the cool, like, dune left um, lake right here. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, it's aesthetically pleasing, but there's function to that, too, because think of where your layup zone is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm forcing you away from the lake, so if you're going to bail out, you're bailing out left. Well, now you're kind of shooting up over that dune. Mm -hmm. With the green running away from you. Yeah. Oh, three wood out of here is going to be just, this is no chance. Yeah. If it gets down to that front right bunker, that's not a bad location. Mm. Or at least adjacent to it. That's a decent angle, at least. The angle that my ball's on isn't great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> eh. Slash, 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 and we might make birdie. <laughs> Wouldn't want to do that into the wind, though. Yeah, screw it. We're going to go by feel on this one. There's a lot of break in it anyway. Oh, yeah, there gets to a point where I just don't bother counting anymore. It's not that I don't bother. It's just that I simply can't count that high. <laughs> Gave it a run. It was not lacking for line or pace. Actually, most of my playthroughs, I don't. I just, I putt by feel. I don't usually start actually reading greens until it's competition rounds. I play too many courses, my head would hurt. Right. All right, now we're heading home. A three, a four, and a five. This, I mean, the detail work here is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So we've given you kind of a breather par five, and now we've smacked you in the face with an insanely long par three and a half. 260 into the wind. Hmm. Yeah. Up, oh, and uphill. Good. With a bit of, of a beer, it's quality. Oh. Just for you. Lovely. <laughs> I knew you'd love that. Oh, yeah. I love a good beer. It's... Especially with some cheese and some summer sausage. <laughs> oh, yeah. There it is. Oh. 
Oh, don't stay on that fringe. No. Oh, oh no, it didn't. There it comes. So here's my conundrum. I haven't hit a driver to a par three since I was 12. And I'm not going to start now. I'm just going to be stubborn and old. And I'll accept that I come up a hair short. I tell you what, though, that that carries about a yard less. It probably hits in the face of that swale. And then you really had had a mile left. Eh. At least I wouldn't hit driver into a par three. I have no shame. <laughs> Hey, once upon a time, the 8th at Oakmont played 280, so... Yeah, well, they they put it at three bills for the Open one year, the U.S. Open. Yeah. So, I mean, these all these bunkers, I mean, this is all just, is it all like a crap ton of splining all of them, or...? Uh, most of these bunkers, there were a couple, a number of the bigger bunkers were done at least partially with splines, but a lot of, a lot of the bunker work was with that little D-shaped fuzzy brush on the front page. Mm. And that's how you get a lot of the interesting nooks and crannies and whatnot. Uh... Where you'll see spline on these is especially close to the fairway or close to the green. Because the one thing that splines do, or don't do, that brushes do, is they don't cut into the into the fairway or green texture. Okay. So if I were drawing the inside edge of a bunker right next to to the light rough of the, the fairway there with brushes, it would start to eat in on it with, with the fuzzy shaped D brush. Whereas splines you can you can draw all day and it won't touch them. That that's how a lot of the the sand belt style courses that's how that looks achieved. A lot of those bunkers are just splined. Oh okay. So that they don't cut into the fairway or the green. Hmm. What do we do here? Eh. I guess we'll take a blind shot. Yeah. And, and some might ask, well, why don't you just bunt it up the, the 11th? Where you're not worried about that, that dog leg. Yeah, you could. But again, it's another situation where the green slopes from right to left... And a little bit back. To, that's actually more kind of a, a turtle where it's high yeah. in the center and falls off front and back. But it definitely slows from left to right. So if you're coming in from the left, you're once again playing to a green that runs away from you. Yeah, you know, and depending on the shot you're hitting, you definitely yeah. don't want that. Yeah. Or like on 10, yeah, you could drive it up the 18th, have an easy easier drive, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, you're going from a, a long, skinny green to a very wide but narrow landing area that, again, is running away from you. So it's like our mama told us, just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, no, he's okay. I'll take right in the center of the green. And are those, like, dirt cart paths? Yes. Okay. And those were splined in with bunker. Oh, so the game will think that's a bunker. Okay. Yep. And the one nice thing about splines, too, is if you get them small enough, 
let's say width of about one nine or smaller mm-hmm. is they tend not to flatten out the ground either. And you can do some nice things with flat bottom bunkers that way. Oh, okay. Is it going to stay up? Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Oh, that went way right. Oh, dear. Another par. And now we're going to finish. So this hole is interesting because, depending what version you're playing, yeah. different hole. It, it, it is. And... It... You know, those there are those who say par is irrelevant, and I, I think to an extent when you design it is. But the player, it's most certainly not. Right. Because there is a major psychological difference between a, a, a breather, feel-good par 5 coming in and an absolute kick-in-the-teeth brute of a par 4. Yeah, my feeling has always been, and I mean, I don't design, so, but... I mean, par is defined as the number of shots it's supposed to take you to get to the green plus two putts, right? Yep. So I always look at a, at a hole and I'm like, what's the shot in regulation asking me to do? And that's to me where par matters. If it's a 500-yard par four with a tiny green with no run-up, that's poor design. Right. If that's a par five, well, now that changes things. Yeah. And the only thing that really changed between the two versions is one number. Yeah. The tees are the same, green, green's the same, pins in pretty much the same spot. It's just, am I asking you to finish it in four or finish it in five? Mm hmm. It wouldn't mean a single lick of difference in match play. No, it wouldn't. I mean, that to an extent works with 16, too, because you could call that a really short par 4 or a really long par 3. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there's definitely a, a school of thought that par is completely arbitrary, blah, 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 but it is also the guideline of how you're supposed to play the game. Well, like, like I said, though, I mean, it, it, in here it's a lot dealing with the psyche of the golfer. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if I'm walking off this green in four, how am I feeling? Right. You know, is, is it a nice little smile of a birdie to walk off on? Or did I just have to grind my butt off to save a par and survive and get to the clubhouse? Right. And in the mind of the golfer, those are two entirely different things. Yeah, I mean, if you make four, regardless of what par it is, you're happy. If you make five, you're not. But it's a different kind of happy, I hear you. I might have overcooked that a little. Yeah, it's sticking there. I did not need that fast. But yeah, for me, it's it's with par. I look at, so I always just start at a par three. You're you're supposed to get on the green in one. Yep. Are you leaving me? Like, there's a shot you're asking me to play a reasonable one. Uh -oh. oh, come on now. Hey, hey likes the eagle to finish things off on the home track. So then I I from there I work my way back. Okay, par four. I'm supposed to get there in two. Is the second shot reasonable? Ah, crush that. Yeah, that's the thing. Even I... oh no. Oh, I'm I'm not even paying attention now. <laughs> I just like get it in. <laughs> get this done. There we go. 
I mean, even into a headwind, I mean, two two solid pokes will get you home. Yeah. Two solid pokes will get you a lot in life, actually. Yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm tired. Um, Yeah, I mean, there, there's so much about this course that it's tough to ask questions about because it's just, it's what you saw in your mind and, and yeah. you know, how did you create this? Well, I, it, I had an idea and this is how it came together, right? So, um, it's just one of those things that certain people can do it and most people can't. <laughs> it's what it comes down to. Um, what's your favorite thing about the course? I, th I think it, it, this is going to sound like a cop out, but it, I think it's almost the whole package of it. How it, how it all kind of ties together. I mean, the aesthetic sure really looks good, but then the, the, the angles and kind of how you have to plot your way around and just, I mean, it, it, I mean, it's probably for others to say, but I, I feel like this might be one of my more complete golf courses. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I I put it, I put it and Nasita neck and neck as far as my two favorites personally, as far as builds. Okay. Uh, just just how the the end products came out and you know where environment meets immersion meets gameplay, and hopefully when all those kind of come together, it it, it leads to a fun eighteen for whoever's playing it. Mm -hmm. That's the end goal. I mean, the, the you know. Hopefully, engage the golfer, challenge them a little bit, and most importantly, that they have fun. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing we're doing. At this, it's a pastime. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't have fun in the thirty minutes you were whacking it around the course, then I I didn't do my job. Yeah, and I mean, and that's you know, thou shalt not defend par, right? That's part of where that comes from because it's never fun when you're playing upside down greens and all the other things people do to try to make sure you can't birdie the hole. Yeah. Uh, what would you change about the course if you could? That's a tough question. Figured it'd be a tough one. If I had it to rethink, there, there are a few holes that ended up a bit samey. Uh, on both sides, I'm thinking six and eleven. Okay, are, are kind of analogs of one another. To a lesser extent, twelve and seventeen, and maybe a little bit of two are kind of the same. I mean, they feel a touch samey, but at least in, in terms of eleven, twelve, thirteen, I was kind of shoehorned in with what I had there. That was just. You know, the little triangle there once you got the, you know, 13, 14, 15, running up the coast, 16, 17, 18 in, got one and coming back the other side. I mean, that was pretty much the triangle. You had, you had that space to get two golf holes in. So mm -hmm. it was kind of, kind of working with what you had there. Um, but no, I'd say overall, I wouldn't wouldn't change a heck of a lot i was i was happy with how that one turned out yeah i, I can see why it's, a, it's quite the course um i know Appreciate i raved that. about it in the uh, playthrough i did by myself it's been fun talking to you um as we play it oh i appreciate it thanks for having me on yeah no problem um i had something else i don't remember what i'm tired <laughs> that match <laughs> that match took a bunch out of me Tear it off <laughs> mayo thanks for having thanks for coming on and doing this uh no appreciate problem. appreciate you taking time out of your day to do this uh we'll have another playthrough to the designer in the near future make sure you guys are following uh mayday on his twitch channel his twitter all that will be in the description below um and don't forget wednesday night 7 30 eastern the Diamond Cutters with Mayday, 91283, Hinter, Sire, and Scob. Um, they always play two matches, um, usually like two 18-hole two, uh, matches of different, whether it's Alt Shot, Blood Scramble, or whatever. Um, and they often are looking for courses that maybe have flown under the radar a little bit. 
um and, and giving them some exposure and then just having a riot out there so uh yeah make sure you're checking that out again links will be in the description thanks again mayday yep, cheers thanks wade all right thank you um i'll have another playthrough designer soon uh for now i'm gonna say cheers thanks all